Welcome to part three of IB Expert Tutorial Firebird Installations. I will now return to my administrator DOS window and go to the directory FB21 underscore W64S and from there to the bin directory. Here I select the install underscore super dot bat and most important, since Firebird 2, we can add an individual instance name in contrast to Firebird 1.5, where the default instance is fixed. So, I add a parameter, fb21 underscore w64s, which will be the instance name. I've used the same name as the directory for easy identification. Now, the Firebird 2.1 super server will be installed under this name. In the task manager, we can see that there is now an additional guardian without the suffix asterisk 32, indicating a 64-bit program, and a new FB server executable, which is the main program. Now I will install yet another Firebird server, this time the classic server. As I have already mentioned, the super server uses one CPU and a shared cache for all users, enabling it to answer some queries much quicker. In today's world of extremely fast hard drives, RAID systems and so on, the classic server can sometimes have the advantage. The classic server starts a new process for each client and uses dedicated cache for each client. This means, if you have a very fast data medium, sufficient memory and multiple CPUs, then these are all good arguments for using the classic server, as long as you take into consideration its occasional disadvantages. Here we select again version 2.1. That means that I need to specify a different port number. When I have multiple instances of the same version, I always use the port number with the version number for the super server and I install the classic server on the port with the version number plus one. Here, 3022. Then I go back to my directory with the installation files, fb21 underscore w64c, c for classic, and then to the bin directory and start the install underscore classic bat, again with a parameter, this time fb21 underscore w64c, so that I have a unique and logical name for this instance. Here you can see that it looks a little different, as the classic server monitors itself and does not need the guardian. And if we take another look in the task manager, we can see the Firebird guardians and the Firebird servers and the fb underscore init underscore server dot exe. That is the classic server. Each time a client connects to the server, you will see a new instance of this process with which you can directly identify the client. And to future proof this topic, we will finally install Firebird 2.5. I have an unpacked copy of the Fiber 2.5 Release Candidate 3 zip file, which I now use and alter the configuration file. Adding the port 3027. Because this time I'm installing the new Fiber 2.5 architecture, the Super Classic Server, which combines the advantages of the Super Server with those of the Classic Server architecture. You will be able to find out more about this new architecture and its advantages compared to the super server and classic architecture at the next Firebird conference held in Bremen, North Germany in November 2010. You can find further information about the Firebird conference online at www.firebird-conference.com. Here you can also find a summary of all sessions and also regi register your participation online. As we have already defined the version number as port number for the super server and the version number plus one as the port number for classic server, 
I have designated the version number plus two as the port number for the Super Classic server, 3027. So I return to my directory. It's vital to have a separate directory for each instance, otherwise you will encounter problems as each instance accesses and uses files of the same name. I now call the install underscore superclassic.bat in the bin directory, again with the same syntax. FB25 underscore W64SC, SC for superclassic. Here you can see that this is a release candidate, the current version available in September 2010. We are hoping that the final Firebird 2.5 version will be released in time for the Firebird conference in November 2010, although it may go to release candidate 4 before the final release. We have now managed to install four different Firebird servers alongside each other. Version 1.5 version 2.1 in two flavors, and version 2.5. In the next video, we will see how to access these different versions. You will also see, particularly of interest for developers, for example, that there are huge advantages to be gained when you test certain SQLs or parts of your application during the early development stages on these different platforms. Here you can see the Guardian twice and here the servers, identifiable by the instance names. That is the classic, that the super server, and that the super classic. With this method, I can simply recognize which of these servers I need to run alongside each other, or perhaps even which ones I need to shut down. So, we have come to the end of the first IB Expert Firebird tutorial, Firebird installations with multi-instances. Thank you for taking the time to watch this film. We hope you have learned something new and will continue to view our forthcoming series of tutorials. Goodbye from all of us at IB Expert.